Now, as a composer that's recently finished 12 years of music composition at the collegiate level, I have some opinions about where one can go to school, especially at the undergraduate level. And in case you're wondering, those 12 years of schooling were split between the University of Southern California, where I did my bachelor's, the Juilliard School, where I did my master's, and Columbia University, where I did my doctorate. All right, so let's get on with the list, starting with Rice University's Shepherd School of Music, located in Houston, Texas. Now, as an undergrad at Rice, you're gonna be surrounded by not just your fellow music students at the Shepherd School of Music, but also the wider campus community, which will feature all other kinds of majors like communications, political science, chemistry, physics, etc. Not to mention participating in sporting events as well as just being friends with people outside of just the music orbit. Now I find this to be a really important facet in that as a music major, I feel like it's just a little bit short-sighted to just focus on music for that entire four years. I really liked, at least for me, my time at USC, being surrounded by many other kinds of people and learning from them as well as being a little bit more rounded. So I really like here at Rice and some of the other places I mentioned on this list that they do offer this conservatory setting within a wider campus. Now the next thing I like about Rice University are its faculty, which includes folks like Kareem El Zand and Pierre Jalbert, who are both very, very prolific in the field of composition and have their music performed all over the world. They're people that you can really look up to at this particular university. Now, in terms of opportunities, you're not gonna have much of a problem here at this school. The conservatory musicians are very open to playing new music. The Shepherd School of Music Symphony Orchestra plays new music from the students every single year. And there are many, many small ensembles all around Houston that do play new music year round. Now, in terms of the city of Houston itself, there's no shortage of institutions that offer classical music, such as the Houston Symphony, the Houston Grand Opera, the Camera, Musica. I mean, the list kind of just goes on and on and on. And new music ensembles especially are sprouting up every single year. Now, the one downside with Rice is that since they are a private institution, they don't offer any kind of in-state tuition that some of these other schools on this list do provide, which come at a reduced cost if you live in that particular state. Now, because it is a private institution, you're gonna pay private institution prices, right? So it's gonna be upwards of $50,000 a year to go to the school, unless you get some kind of merit-based scholarship or need-based financial aid. Now let's move on to number six, and that's going to be the University of Michigan School of Music, Theater, and Dance, located about 45 minutes driving distance from the city of Detroit. Now like the Shepherd School of Music, the School of Music, Theater, and Dance is part of the larger University of Michigan at Ann Arbor campus. Now, of course, this means that you're gonna be afforded the same inter-campus possibilities like you do at a place like Rice. Now, in terms of the teachers, you do have an all-star lineup of faculty, including folks like Bright Shang and Michael Doherty, both who are really big in terms of the orchestral and wind ensemble worlds. Now, while Ann Arbor is a very, very small town, especially in relation to these other major metropolitan areas that we'll be discussing, the cultural imprint that Ann Arbor has is extremely strong in the state of Michigan, especially in regards to their art scene and their film scene. So there won't be any shortage of cultural opportunities in those realms if you go to the University of Michigan. Now, because the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor is a public university, they're gonna be offering what's called in-state tuition for undergraduate students that already live in the state of Michigan. Now, in terms of numbers, let's say that you are an in-state resident taking 12 units per semester, which is considered a full load. You'd be paying about $8,000 a semester, which is way, way less than the out-of-state tuition at this particular school, which was gonna run you about $29,000 per semester. And as you've noticed, those out-of-state numbers are pretty similar to what Rice offers as a private institution. All right then, so let's move on to the number five school on this list, and that's gonna be the University of Southern California, located in Los Angeles, California. Now I'm very biased when it comes to USC. I went there as an undergrad, I absolutely loved it. I got along with all the teachers, I was part of a fraternity. I was even part of the marching band for a semester. So I pretty much got as much as one possibly could out of that institution. Now, like the previous two schools we mentioned, the University of Southern California is a large campus with a school of music, a school of music that happens to be called the Thornton School of Music. Now, in terms of the composition faculty, you have some major hitters here, including people like Andrew Norman, who writes these really huge, amazing soundscapes for the orchestra 
and he's basically worked with every single major orchestra in the entire world. Well, maybe I'm exaggerating there a little bit, but it seems like it. Then you have folks like Ted Hearn, who's known for writing these politically charged activist kind of dramas, especially with the voice and chamber ensembles. So you're gonna get a really good mix of faculty here that have experience with different mediums. Now, in terms of the opportunities, just like the other two schools mentioned on this list, you're gonna be surrounded by conservatory level musicians that are gonna be happy to play your music as long as you're very nice to them. You're also gonna have the opportunity to work with the wind ensemble or the orchestra if you're into writing large scale pieces for those kinds of mediums. And if you're someone that wants to try out film scoring, there's really no better place to be than the University of Southern California's Thorn School of Music. Why? Well, right next to the Thorn School is, guess what? The world famous School of Cinematic Arts. Now, as an undergrad at USC, I was really interested in pursuing film scoring to such an extent where I would try to meet as many film students as possible so I can work on their student films. Now, what was really exciting about working on these films was how fast paced it was. So one day I would be getting the film and then spotting it with a director then after that, I would figure out what the ensemble I wanna hire is. I would write the whole score over a week. Then the very next week, I would record all the musicians at what's called the John Williams scoring stage. And then about a month after that, I would see the fruits of my labor, the score that I wrote up with the film in the huge theater that they have at USC. Now for me personally, film music is not something I ended up pursuing as a career, but I remember at that time, it was important for me to at least have that experience so that I can figure out all the different ways that one could make a living as a composer. And because you're in a big city like Los Angeles, you're of course gonna be surrounded by many cultural institutions, not just classical music ones, but if we're gonna name some of those, those include the Los Angeles Philharmonic, the Los Angeles Opera, and Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra, just to name a few. Now, as far as scholarships go, USC does offer some very generous merit-based scholarships, such as the Trustee Scholarship, which is a full tuition scholarship, and the Presidential Scholarship, which is a half tuition scholarship. So like Rice University, USC is a private institution. So if you don't get one of these merit-based scholarships, the tuition can run you upwards of 50 to $60,000 a year. This is just something to keep in mind, especially with private institutions. And speaking of private institutions, we're gonna move on to our fourth school, and that's gonna be the Juilliard School in New York City. Now, this is the first school on the list that's not a school of music within a larger university campus. This is, in fact, a self-contained conservatory that only offers music, dance, and drama. So at Juilliard and places like it, you won't be getting that well-rounded, undergraduate experience like you'd be getting at Rice, University of Michigan, and USC. Now, that being said, I do list Juilliard this high because of the recent developments they've made in their composition faculty. So in this last couple of years, the composition faculty has changed pretty drastically. So now we have the chair of composition, Melinda Wagner, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning composer in her own right. Then we have these two new, really exciting additions, Valerie Coleman, who used to be part of the Imani Winds, which I actually wrote a piece for this past year. Then we have composers like Nina C. Young, who is a Columbia graduate herself and has also taught places like the University of Texas in Austin, as well as the University of Southern California, where she was teaching before she got snagged by Juilliard. And to round out this faculty, we have Amy Beth Kirsten, John Corleano, who was my teacher at Juilliard, and Matthias Pincher, who is also a conductor himself and is the conductor of the Kansas City Symphony. Now at Juilliard, you are literally at the epicenter of cultural activity in the United States. Juilliard is located in the heart of Manhattan, right by Lincoln Center, where you have cultural institutions like the Met Opera, New York Philharmonic, and the New York City Ballet. And just a few blocks away, you have Broadway and all that excitement that goes along with it. Now, in addition to those very large cultural institutions, you do have smaller ensembles that play new music all the time, like the Talé Ensemble, International Contemporary Ensemble, the Jack Quartet. I mean, the list just keeps going on and on and on, especially in New York City. Now, at Juilliard itself, besides being around some of the most world-class musicians you're ever gonna meet, there are more structured opportunities for composers to have their music performed. For example, the Juilliard Orchestra performs and reads student composers' works 
every single year. Sometimes I hear 10, 11, 12 pieces getting read and performed in one single year, which is unheard of for a student orchestra. There are also a myriad of contests that are run every single year. So for example, there are chamber contests where you can have your music performed at Alice Tully Hall, whether they be piano trios or string quartets or other kind of smaller ensembles like that. You can have your music performed by the Axiom Ensemble, which is the new music ensemble over at Juilliard. Not to mention the opportunity to work with dancers at Juilliard who are not just really great at dancing itself, but also really talented choreographers. So they really enjoy the process of not just having new choreography, but also having new music that goes along with that choreography. A while back, I did an interview with the instructor that was responsible for getting the choreographers and composers together. If you're interested in checking that out, I have that in the link down in the description below. Now, as far as tuition goes, Juilliard is a private institution, so they're gonna have private institution style prices. So that means you're gonna be running 50 to $60,000 of tuition every single year. Now compared to other conservatories, Juilliard is actually quite generous in terms of the merit scholarships and financial aid, but they're still not there yet in terms of offering tuition free programs for everybody involved at the school. There are some tuition free programs like the Baroque program, as well as the MFA program, which they just started rolling out, but they're just not there yet in offering tuition free programs for everybody at the school. I think that's the direction Juilliard should be going in if they're going to be able to compete with these next couple of schools that I'm about to mention. Now, quick sidebar, if you're wondering what other schools might be a good fit for you besides some of the ones that I've been highlighting in this video so far, I do offer a number of resources on my Buy Me A Coffee page that should help you with your school choosing journey, as well as other services like one-on-one -on -one instruction and private written feedback on your work. Now, in case you're wondering, my own private students have gone on to be accepted at some of the top programs here in the United States, including USC, the Manhattan School of Music, the Peabody Institute, and many other fantastic places. You can find out more information about any of those services through the links in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. Now let's head to number three, the Peabody Institute at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. Now like the earlier institutions I mentioned, the Peabody Institute is just one small part of the larger Johns Hopkins University. So there you should be getting a more well-rounded education than you would at say the Juilliard School. Now at Peabody specifically, one can make an argument that they have the most well-rounded, most accomplished composition faculty in the entire United States. You have people like Oscar Bettison, Du Yun, Kevin Putz, Felipe Lara, and Sky Mackley, who all together encompass such a rich and diverse array of aesthetics, styles, and personalities. I would find it very difficult for you not to get along with any one of them throughout your four years at the Peabody Institute. And how can I leave out Michael Hirsch, who is not just a gifted composer, but an equally gifted pianist in his own right. Now, besides the stellar reputation of the composition faculty at Peabody, the reason I have this institute so high up on my list is concerning the recent news that they just uncovered about how they're gonna go about charging tuition in the coming years. In this recent press release, Peabody announced that it will meet 100% of demonstrated financial aid for all domestic undergraduate students and eliminate loans from financial aid packages beginning in the fall 2024 semester. Now, I think this is amazing news and I hope that more schools follow suit as the years go by. Now, heading to our number two school will be the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, while you're in Philadelphia, you'll be part of a major cultural center that has institutions like the Philadelphia Orchestra, the Kimmel Center, Opera Philadelphia, and many other new music ensembles that are spring up from Philadelphia every single year. Now, the Curtis Institute of Music, generally speaking, has a more traditional-minded faculty, including composers like Amy Beth Kirsten, Jonathan Bailey Holland, Nick DiBernardino, Steve Mackey, and Richard Daniel Poor. And like Juilliard, you're arguably going to be around literally the best young classical musicians anywhere in the world here at the Curtis Institute of Music. Now, one of the things I like about Curtis the most is that they have a very strong relationship with the alumni that graduate from there. Oftentimes, the school would bring back alumni to have their music played, as well as commission them to write for their new crop of students. Now, the reason I have Curtis so high up on my list 
has to do with the tuition. There isn't any of it. As long as you get into Curtis, which is a very tall order, by the way, you don't have to pay a nickel of tuition when you go to Curtis for every single one of those years. Which leads us to what could possibly be the number one school on this list if Curtis offers all of those things. Now, if you've seen my video from a couple of years back, you could probably guess what I'm about to say here. There is no one school that's the end all be all best school for a composition. But if I can offer any words of wisdom for the best school of composition for you, it would be these two things. Number one, attend the school that offers you the most scholarship in terms of grants and reject any loan-based aid that they might offer you that you will have to pay back for years and years and years after you graduate. Now, let me tell you a story. Back when I was 17, I was accepted to my dream school, and that would be this exchange program that Columbia University has with the Juilliard School. So Columbia, you would go there on a four-year degree studying whatever you want, and at the same time, you'll be taking lessons with a composition teacher at Juilliard. It was a dream scenario for me because at that time, I was really into all kinds of subjects not just music. At the same time, I had the very good fortune to be accepted to USC on a full tuition scholarship. Now guess which one of those two I wanted to go to? Me, as someone that lived in California my whole life, I wanted to go to New York and live the New York City lifestyle, go to Columbia and Ivy League, go to Juilliard, the top conservatory in the entire world, and experience what that life might lead to. Now, spoiler alert, I didn't end up going to Columbia and Juilliard for my undergrad, but if I did, I would have had hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt that I had to pay back after graduating from those two institutions. And I might possibly not have been able to go on to do my master's and doctorate after that. However, at USC, I didn't have to worry about any of that. I knew that after I graduated with the four years, at USC, I wouldn't be in any debt and I can basically pursue whatever I wanted. Now, without the support of my parents and the late Steve Stuckey, who helped steer me to go to USC, I'm not sure what I would have done, but I'm really glad that I ended up going to USC. Now, the next thing to consider, especially if you have very little connection to the field of music, is to go to a college that is within about one hour driving distance from a major metropolitan center. That way you can make it a point to attend concerts and be exposed to the thriving classical music scenes that they have in those areas. Please let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and see you next time.